Howdy folks, today we're going to look at um, how to update and delete in Mongo, or Mongoose rather, because we already did it with Mongo. So let's take a look at our user API. We've already done a create, we've done a find, etc. Now we've got update. Okay, so here we're setting and we're pushing on the books. The issue that we run into though is that books doesn't exist in our schema. And so if I try to push to books, it's just not going to do anything. It's going to ignore me because it's not in the schema, and that's how Mongoose works. So first thing we got to do, add that to the schema. Go to our user model here, and how do we de indicate an array here? Because I can say books string, but then that's a single string, and Mongoose is going to know that. Well, what we do, we put square brackets around it. What does that do? That, rather than push past string, it passes an array containing string, and Mongoose knows to look for that to see if it's supposed to be an array. It's a little weird, but if you do this, Mongoose just knows, okay, this is meant to be an array. So now if I come back here, back to my creation, okay, and I set this to an empty um, array, start it up. And let's go to create user. All right, send, and you can see it's got that array in there now. If I go in here, refresh, it has that empty array. So far, so good. Now, let's take a look at our put. Okay, we've got email, we got books. We're not going to have the DB. Instead, we're going to say users, but it's not update one. It's going to be find one and update. Little different, right? Um, because we don't, we know we're only updating one. We have our ID in here. We have our set with the email, which we may not actually need. Mongoose kind of assumes that you're setting by default because um, it's a little easier. So you don't need that set there, but it doesn't hurt to leave it in. Then we have push, and we're pushing each of the books onto the stack. This all stays the same. Very similar to Mongo. All right, let's restart this. Let's go here, let's take this new ID, go into our update, update the ID, and I've already pre-filled this. Rather than objects, now I've got it with these two uh, strings. So let's send that. And you can see, uh, it didn't actually work. Did I get the right? Yes, I did get the right one. Okay, well let's take a look at that. Make sure that's in there. Email books. Doesn't seem like it actually worked. Find one and update. We've got our ID. Why not? So let's actually take a look at the data in Compass. And if we look at the data in Compass, we can see it did actually update. It went in here, but we got the old object back. So let's say we did it again, right? Well, now it tells us we got book one and book two, but if we refresh here, we've now got four books because it added them again. Well, what's going on there is that find one and update, this result is actually the old object. It's not the new one. So Mongoose does make those changes, but then just returns the old object, which, you know, isn't very helpful. So what we have to do is we actually have to give it an option. So the third parameter, we have search, we have update. Then we have this last one, which is going to be the callback but we can pass in options and say new true. What that will do is that will give us the new option or the new document after it's done. So let's make a new um, user to test that. Delete this old one, go in here. We're gonna create another new user. Okay, copy that, update user. And let's run this now. And now you can see, it gives us, we've got our two books in here, we've got our test, Let's see, and now that's what we get as the response. So, that's how we do that update, and that's just a little weird quirk about find one and update, is that it does give you the old document unless you specifically request the new one. Alright, so, next one is delete. Okay, same thing, how do we do delete? It's going to be users dot find one and delete basically the same exact thing we don't need our database here so we already got that otherwise we pass in our id and this can be again be any query and that should delete it 
let's give it a test. Let's make sure. All right, again, make sure we get the right user ID, delete user, put in the ID, send, and it gives you the user it deleted. And then if we go here, it's gone. So that is how to do updates and deletes. So let's take a real quick look at how we handle, um, I'm not gonna go into too much how you actually do the CRUD on them because that'll be later, but let's talk about how we handle sub documents. So remember how we talked about why do we have a schema here when we're just creating a model out of it? Well, let's say we have a book schema. So let's make a new schema for our books, okay? So we're gonna say uh, book schema equals new mong schema, And what are some things for the books? Well, we had our title, which is a string, right? And then if you remember, our author uh, was something that was a little nested. So let's get into that a little later. So now book schema, all right? So instead of string, I can just say book schema. And now Mongoose will expect objects for that instead of the title. Okay, so now let's do the same thing for author. You can also do this inline. Um, so I could actually just say like author oops, is new mongoose.schema. But this is just kind of, oops, this is kind of better to keep track of it if you make um, your uh, full schema for it. So name a uh, string. Okay, so then we come in here and we say author is an author schema. And you notice I'm not putting it in brackets because you only have one author. In, in a realistic situation, you probably could have multiple authors for a book. That's okay. So now, uh, we already deleted that one, that's fine. Let's go, let's restart this. Okay, now let's create a new user. So we create a user, all right books. This didn't change because we didn't add any books. Now let's go to update user and let's try to insert these books. We get an internal server error. Not not the greatest, but you know, it's because something crashed. And let's take a look at our full error here. Um, cannot update user. Cast error. Cast embedded fail for value book at path books because object parameter error. That's a very large thing. Must be an object got book one. Basically what that's saying is they're saying, hey, you told us this was gonna be an object and it was gonna look like this. And that's not what we got. So this is a problem. So this is what Mongoose can be useful for. It still enforces that schema, but it's a little more flexible. All right, so let's put our, our book in here as an object. Title, book one, title, book two. Okay. Go ahead and send that. Now we got 200. Okay. Title and title. And if I refresh, we've got that in there. Now you might be saying, Hey, uh, where's the author? Well, none of these fields are required. You can make them required. There's a way of doing that, but I didn't say the author was required. So it just says, Oh, there's no author. I can always add it later on and it'll be fine. So like if I go in here, and I want to add um, book three, author, name, author one. And we're going to get rid of here, run that. Now you can see we have book three with author. And you notice Mongoose creates subdocument IDs. Mongo does not do this. So if you, if you add a subdocument into Mongo, it doesn't do an ID for it, but Mongoose does make individual IDs. Why? Because the schema itself has an ID on it. So when you create a schema, the schema by default comes with that ID field. And so Mongoose just makes that for you automatically. Um, so we talked about, um, first of all, how to do arrays in the schema. Uh, we talked about how to update in Mongoose. We talked about how to delete in Mongoose. And then we talked about how to do sub-document schemas. So how to make it so that Mongoose recognizes that you could pass an object into these things. 
Um, that's all we're going to do for now. Um, next couple of videos, we'll talk about how to actually do updating and deleting of these sub documents because Mongoose has a couple different ways to do that that Mongo didn't have. Well, it did have, but they're harder. So yeah, should be fun. I uh, hope this is informative and I'll see you all next time.